Wilfred Edwards was born in Norwich on the 16th of the 2nd, 1893, to parents that were tailors. They lived at Vauxhall Street, which still exists today, but the house doesn't. And if you look at the maps, you'll see that it was extensively bombed. The map showing is 1946. They didn't live there at that time. But the very first map shows the approximate area of where he would have lived. In Leeds, he studied to become a tailor like his parents. That was at the Park Lane Council School. From tailoring, he moved into mining, a pit called Waterloo Mine. That no longer exists. However, but from the mine, he went on to sign up for the military. It was at this point his wife, whom he had married, had gone to work in the factories to work in munitions. The joining up office in Leeds was next to the train station. The building no longer exists. The buildings that appeared after that resemble the same shape, as you can see from the photographs. The regiment he joined was the King's Own Yorkshire Light Infantry. By the time Wilfred was on his way to winning his Victoria Cross, he'd already been sent home twice for war injuries. Quite severe because he'd been in, back in Blighty for quite a number of months during each period. And it was at the... Third Battle of Ypres that he won the VC. Ypres, the third battle, is Passchendaele, a very famous battle which he won the VC in. It was the 16th of August 1917 at Langemak, Belgium, which we refer to as Passchendaele. His citation reads, When all company officers were lost, Private Edwards, without hesitation and under heavy machine gun and rifle fire from a strong concrete fort, dashed forward at great personal risk, bombed through loopholes, surmounted the fort and waved his company to advance. Three officers and 30 other ranks were taken prisoner by him in the fort. Later, he did most valuable work as a runner, eventually guiding most of the battalion through very difficult ground. Throughout, he set a splendid example and was utterly regardless of danger. Reading that all sounds very dry, but when you think of what the Passchendaele was with the mud, what the German machine gun fire was like, we can't possibly imagine how it must have been, but this would have been a ferocious battle. The bombs they're referring to are Mills bombs, which we call hand grenades today, and the loophole that he threw them through on the concrete fort a machine gun slit on what we would now call a pillbox. He not only took that out, when he did, he climbed on top of it to let the rest of his battalion know that they could advance. And that must have been a great personal risk to himself. Four months later after this event, he was given a commission of second lieutenant in December 17. Uh, he was ultimately demobilised in June 1919. Okay, so we've come to Gotts Park in Armley. Uh, there's a World War I memorial here, and on the centenary of <clears throat> Wilfred um, Edwards receiving his Victoria Cross, they laid a commemorative paving slab here, and at the same time, they laid one in Norwich where he was from. So I'll turn the camera around and I'll show you that now, along with the War Memorial. He died in January 1972 with full military honours. His medals are currently on display in the King's Own Yorkshire Light Infantry Museum and that's at Doncaster in England. He is buried in the Upper and Lower Wortley Cemetery in Leeds, which is literally around the corner.
and we'll go there and we'll look at his grave. He also is mentioned on a plaque at the War Memorial, which was originally placed outside the recruitment office location, which if you go back and look at the pictures, you can see again. We are now in Upper and Lower Wortley Cemetery in Leeds. Spelt Wortley, but it's pronounced Wortley. Uh, this is the final resting place of Wilfred. His final address in Leeds is not far away, it's just about 10 minutes walking, something like that. And he died in St James's Hospital in Leeds. As I'm looking around, it's, it's a nice cemetery. He's got good company, other soldiers with him. Good thing about military graves is you, you can see who they were, when they were born and died, the regiment they were in, and quite often the dates can indicate to the battles that they were in. <clears throat> so it's very nice here, very peaceful. He should be over there somewhere in the background. A nice view over Leeds. So a lot of the places he will have been don't exist anymore, like the mine, that's gone. Uh, there was a village there as well, the entire village has been knocked down. Where he signed on the recruitment office, there's one or two buildings around there that still exist from when he would have been signing on um, for the military. But most of them are all new builds. Times change. He will have seen them change. So we're approaching his grave now. It's a rather special one because, of course, he did win the Victoria Cross, which earns it on his headstone and what we'll do is we'll go in for a close look it's just there behind me we'll move in and uh, pay our respects I hope you enjoyed this episode, please remember to hit like, share, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.